If you enjoy my tutorials and would like to see more, please think about contributing to my Patreon account at patreon.com forward slash metalx1000. Hello, I'm Christopher Acapinti, filmsbychris.com. This is Gabe once again joining me. Now, last time Gabe was here, we were talking about uh, your first experiences with Ubuntu, and um, you were recently telling me about, uh, you know, how, as we talked about in the last interview, you uh, use your phone mostly. You don't even use a laptop much. So even though you've been using Linux for Correct. years, you haven't really gotten into it too much. But your your wife ends up using the laptop more than you do. Correct. And she's not always happy that you're running Linux. No. I mean, you do doable with Windows Seven. Yes. Um, but uh, you were telling me that mainly it's she's she's used to it. It's not that she can't use other software, but she's okay. used to certain software. Correct. Give a few examples of what she uses that. She uses the laptop primarily to organize her pictures and photos. And she got used to using the Google Picasa program with the facial recognition in particular. Um, she does she not hates like it. Go ahead, say it. <laughs> the interface that I was using with the Ubuntu Linux, the mm -hmm. Unity interface in right. particular. Um, now years I ago, she used the Mint. Uh -huh. And she was okay with that. That's going to be my suggestion. <laughs> um, she, she just, growing up in, in different culture, she's from South America, Windows was all there was. Right. Which in, in most countries. In most countries, yeah. including here. It's changing with some countries. Mm -hmm. uh, she, she wanted something that she was used to, and mm -hmm. she studied in school, and wanted it just to work, so she'd go on and not have to think too much. Mm -hmm. And see her pictures. Right. Uh, now, um, you're saying that you, you did get it up and running on, on Linux, but you had to have Wine installed. Correct. And uh, I haven't used Picasa, the, the software, in a couple of years. There was, at one point, it was available in the repositories for Ubuntu and other distributions. Um, although, and I was playing with it, even though it's proprietary software, I kind of liked it, I was using it. And then I realized when I was installing it that it wasn't installing Wine but it was actually installing some of the Wine libraries. So even though it was, they had a release for Linux, it was still actually the Windows version just running on Linux, just kind of seamlessly in a way. Um, so my suggestion to your wife um, is to get over it and try some other piece of software. Yes. <laughs> well, there's a lot of photo managing software yes. on Linux. Um, I don't necessarily think there's really any that is... Uh, they, they, I, I mean, love suggestions. Facial recognition... Uh, Detection, but not face recognition. It was detection, which, right? Well, my oh, mistake. detection. It's detection, not recognition. What's, can you explain the uh, difference? Sure, I'll <laughs> explain the difference. Um, <clears throat> like we have a camera recording right now. Yes. It can go. There's a face here. There's a face there. Recognition, then. Yeah, yeah. That's detection. Face recognition goes. This is Gabe, which normally needs a number of photos to do, which is very hard mm -hmm. to get in software unless you have a bunch of pictures of Gabe and you tag a bunch of them. Then it starts learning. Although I've heard recently that Facebook has acquired some facial recognition software that it is like 96.5 accurate, where humans are 97% accurate. It's like almost as accurate as human okay. with just like one or two photos, wow. which is not yet what Facebook is using on their website. But they acquired that software and they're going to implement it somewhere down the future. But that's why, um, as far as facial recognition, um, is more commonly done online, like with Facebook and Google Plus, because you already have all your pictures right. and you tag, so it has a big database to look from yes. and go, that's Gabe. And it still messes up. It still sees my wife's sister and tags her as my wife. Or sometimes it tags my one and a half year old daughter as a, some friend of mine. I'm like, what? Which it's all based on space between your eyes and your mouth and your nose, not actually how you look. Um, but it still works fairly well. So my, my, my rec recommendation would be to use what used to be called Google Picasa online, Web Picasa, is now just integrated with Google Plus, which is where I, one of the places I back up all my photos. I, I, when it comes to media, stuff that can't be replaced, home photos and videos, I've said this a number of times, I have my Pogo plug, which I've installed Debian on, uh, which I have a local web interface running Apache within my local network, and then remotely I can SSH in. And anytime I have new pictures or videos, I automatically back up the originals to my Pogo plug, and then I have like three YouTube accounts mm -hmm. <laughs> under different names. Uh, I have a Daily Motion account, a Flickr account, and a Vimeo account. Nice. And everything gets back up to at least three of those places, if not more. So if 
one account gets canceled or they all it's very hard and then my pogo plug is key. yeah my pogo plug um is backed up to a cd or dvd or sometimes blu-ray and then put in a fireproof safe so multiple i have just lost so many pictures back in high school i was one of the first people to have a digital camera and I was probably the first person in my town to own a CD burner. I worked at Circuit City at the time, which no longer exists. It's like a Best Buy type place. And at that time, you can order CD burners out of a magazine, but you couldn't get them in stores. And the guys in the computer department kept telling me, oh, we're going to get some. We're going to get some. And every day I'd go to work and be like, has it come in yet? Has it come? And one day I went in. It had come in that morning. The store was not opened yet, and I bought the only one we had. It was four hundred dollars, over four hundred dollars. Well, before my discount, it cost me like three fifty after my employee discount, and it was a two-speed burner. So it took forty minutes to burn just one regular CD, and I did. I backed up most of my photos to there, um, but CDs end up getting scratched. I have a whole book full of them. Some of them I can get pictures off, and some of them I put in. It spins. I've tried different readers because some drives read better than others. Um, I just have lost so many pictures over the years that I don't want that to happen anymore. And storage is so cheap now, both buying yourself a hard drive and it's free online. You know, I, I most people use Dropbox. I've never used Dropbox. I created an account because someone was asking me a question about it once. Never used it. I could. That would be just one more place. I mean, <clears throat> five gig limit is kind of minimal when you're talking about videos. with. With the YouTube accounts, I have unlimited. I think with Vimeo and Daily Motion, they limit me the weekly uploads, but I have unlimited. Um, with Google uh, Plus, which was Picasa, I know it kind of started with yes. Google Picasa and I've moved on now. Um, it's part of your, when you have a Google account, they give you one terabyte now, right. which they keep upgrade, update, updating every couple of years, so I've never even come close to it in my limit. Uh, but that's not even really the limit. The limit is pretty much unlimited uh, because it's a terabyte for original size. So when I upload a photo um, to, to Google+, Plus, um, it stores it for me at the original resolution, whatever it is, right. up to that one terabyte. Once I hit that one terabyte, then it starts scaling it down to, I think, 2,048 pixels on the longest size, which is still, I mean, unless you're going higher than 8 by 10, really isn't going to make a difference. And at least I still have that photo, you know? Um, but. It's just so easy. I don't even. I, I don't trust automated backups. Uh, my phone automatically backs up. Right. But other than that, I just plug in my SD card, edit the video if I need to. I drag it to uh, to Google, to YouTube. Drag it to all these things. Now my internet stops working for like an hour while everything's uploading. Yes. Uh, <laughs> but but other than that, really no inconvenience. It's just drag and drop it all and walk away. Go watch a TV show. Come back and it's all backed up and I can share it. I have them. Some marked private, but most of them I leave public in case in case I lose my password. I can still download them <laughs> off YouTube. Like on my regular YouTube account, I make them private because my viewers don't want to watch all my home videos. But I have another account that they're all under, which they, is they public. May more, they may be it, more curious than you think. Yeah. Well, it's like, well, I don't care if people see it. I just don't want to. I don't want people to unsubscribe because I'm posting right. all these videos of my daughter. Right. I wouldn't put any. I wouldn't back anything up online that would be I consider private. Sure. If it's private, it goes on my Pogo plug, and I just hope that I don't lose my pogo plug, you know, <laughs> and maybe to a CD. I don't put anything online, any photos or videos that I don't care if anybody sees them. Um, so my advice to her would be try using the web interface, but it's still going to be different than what she's used to. But at least everything's still backed up. But it Correct. does do the facial recognition. Correct. It's easy to share. And if the computer dies, it's all backed, it's all up, backed online. up online. And you can always use Google Takeout. Are you familiar with Google Takeout? No. OK. It just Google search, Google Takeout. It'll bring you to a Google Takeout page, and it will um, list everything, like if you have a, a Google Picasa or a YouTube account, and you check um, your emails, your chats. Facebook has the same thing if you go into the settings. Uh, you check what you want. It will create a zip file for you of all the original files, and you can download. And I used to do that once a year. I still do with my documents and stuff, because I back up stuff to Google Docs. Once again, nothing private, mostly programming notes just because it's so easy to hop online and search through them. Uh, but at any point, I can download all that stuff and use it on my computer or upload it to another service. Um, all, like, like Facebook, all your chats. They'll download, I think it's an XML format or mm -hmm. something it downloads it as. And so you can definitely utilize, again, uh, with other services or at least search through and make your own backup. And uh, so although you know, a lot of people worry about Google knowing so much, I don't care if they know about you as long as I have control of my own data. And so now it's like if tomorrow they said, we're doing this, and I go, I don't agree with that. Right. I don't want to use Google anymore. I can 
pull all my stuff, or I already, hopefully already have it mostly pulled off. I'm just not giving them anything I don't already have that right. I can't get back. Uh, again, I've said a number of times, the only real thing I use on my computer that I feel like I'm kind of trapped in, because uh, like I have Flash installed. I'm not saying I'm perfect. I have some proprietary, I have proprietary NVIDIA drivers. I have Flash installed, some proprietary codecs. Um, but I don't feel like I'm really dependent on any of those. Okay. Um, the only thing I really am dependent on is I use Google Voice. Yes. Um, so everyone knows that phone number. <laughs> okay, sorry about that. Uh, SD card got full on the camera. So um, while I was talking about Google Voice um, and how I feel kind of dependent on it, uh, I mean, like I said, I could always leave it. I could use open source software, but then have to either set up my own server or use someone else's service that they're going to charge for. So in this case, I'm opting to use some proprietary software for a cost-free service, and and I do feel locked in, which is exactly why what you're cost? not supposed but to do that. Cost. <laughs> um, so it's not the end of the world. Again, if they were to cancel service, I think the phone number is still mine, just like a cell phone. I could port it to a cell phone. Uh, that would be a I would lose the, the features of it, but I would still be able to take that, that number with me. Um, so, kind of started off on one subject, and I kind of brought us off on another, which is what I tend to do. But again, I thank you for coming, Gabe. I thank you for thank watching. You. Appreciate it. Uh, please visit filmsbychris.com. That's Chris with a K. Uh, there should be a link in the description to the site. And uh, I hope that you have a great day. Wait, <laughs> okay.